Hi, I want to talk to you today about an interesting topic and that is gratitude. I've had lots of people talk to me about the importance of being grateful and, and you know, I always thought it was a bit hokey, but then I decided I wanted to look into the neuroscience of gratitude. So I want to share with you what I think is important to think about as educators when it comes to this practice of gratitude. So what do we know? We now in fact know that when you take in the good, as Rick Hansen says, so you stop and you just think about what are the good things that are in my life, rather than focusing on the negative, focusing on the good, that it changes the chemistry, the neurotransmitters in the brain. You have more of the reward neurotransmitter, you have more of the feel good neurotransmitter, and you feel happier. So we have a choice to make uh, and how we interpret what's going on around the world. And the choice that we have to make is to be able to control the things that we can control. So what we can control is reaching out to our students and parents during these times and saying that it's really great to hear from them. You're really happy to be able to connect even in a different way, but it makes you feel good to know that you're hearing their voice or seeing them. Um, um, and, and it means a lot to you. We know the biology increases this positivity, but it also when you have this sense of gratitude, it neutralizes fear and anxiety. So it's a simple practice as an educator. First of all, look after your own self. Look after yourself by being patient with yourself by creating a routine that is rhythmic. You do it the same way every day. You sleep well, you eat well, you exercise, you lend your calm and you show gratitude. It changes your brain, it changes your heart, it changes your soul. And believe me, when you reach out to your children and families with a sense of gratitude, it will also change and help them. So something to think about in these times. Hope you enjoy it.